Welcome to the Dry Fasting Club and the beautiful world of dry fasting. I'm Yannick Wolf, and I hope to be able to guide you on your dry fasting journey. Before we continue, it's important to note that the information provided here is done to the best of my experience and research. However, it should never be taken as medical advice. You should always speak to a medical professional about your decision to attempt fasting in the first place. Please treat this information as entertainment only. So today, in this episode, we'll go over the following topics. People's experiences with dry fasting and weight loss. Why is fasting the best way to lose weight? What's the safest way to do it? What are the stages of weight loss during a dry fast? Uh, water fasting versus dry fasting. Muscle preservation on dry fasting and how to prepare for your dry fasting uh, in advance. I'd also like to let everyone know that if you are interested in fasting, specifically dry fasting, make sure you join the Dry Fasting Club's Discord group. It's where you'll find expert fasters that can answer most of your questions, as well as like-minded people that are also on the fasting journey. The link to the Discord, as well as references to the topics discussed, will be in the notes. Okay, let's get started. I'm trying a new thing this week. I think it might be more entertaining and overall better to start each episode with a few different people's opinions that I found online. This way, you can keep different viewpoints and experiences in the back of your mind as I continue through the topic. Let me know in the YouTube comments if you like or dislike this idea. People's experiences with dry fasting and weight loss. The first user writes about why dry fasting is better. Uh, quote, dry is two to three times quicker than water. The people who say the fat loss between the two are, s are the same are simply wrong. If you say the fat loss is the same across both dry and water, then you are essentially saying that metabolic water doesn't exist. <clears throat> End quote. I agree with the statement. Although we do have pockets and cavities of water throughout the body, it's more like intra and intercellular water. Some of the water is really hard to get to and can start getting released deeper into the fast. However, once your glycogen is depleted, your weight loss does start to include a lot more of fat loss. Did you know that each gram of glycogen is composed of three grams of water? That is one of the reasons there's a massive weight loss when you either start a dry fast, water fast, or even just stop eating carbohydrates. The second user writes, <clears throat> quote, If the goal is weight loss, I'd stick to OMAD plus light cardio. That's one meal a day. Fasting can be too discouraging. Even after successful five days water fasts, I found myself tempted to eat bad things because I deserve it. In my experience, one meal a day and light cardio are way more effective for permanent weight loss and about a hundred times easier. I'm someone who had successfully dry fasted, um, but I've never dry fasted more than 24 hours, end quote. My only issue with this perspective is that the commenter has only done a one day dry fast. That's not a lot of uh, information. And then they're comparing fasting with their five day water fast experience. It's important to remember that water fasting and intermittent fasting for weight loss sucks because of three major things. One, fat loss is slower. Two, fat cells are not efficiently destroyed on a water fast, so it's easier to regain them. And three, you are more hungry, so mentally it is exponentially harder. This is more on water fasts than intermittent fasting. So it's definitely true that OMAD, one meal a day, is easier, even though it takes much longer to achieve uh, your goal. It's easier because you still get to be sort of a glutton at the end of the day, or whenever you dedicate your one meal. But it's harder because it can take months to get to your desired weight. So it comes down to the question if you're disciplined enough to do OMAD for a long time, or do you want to get results quicker? With OMAD, you have a lot more room for error as well. You can eat slightly more junk, and it will still work 
because the one meal a day continues for multiple months, so it goes on for a long time. Because it's over such an extended period of time, the blips of random binge snacking get flattened when you average it out. So the third user writes, quote, you will lose between 1.35 to 1.5 kilograms of body weight per day of dry fasting. It is largely independent of activity level or body size. Your burn rate is in the tens of thousands of calories per day. I'd say you burn until you have single digit body fat and then it slows down, end quote. So the commenter is not taking into consideration electrolyte related water loss. They're not taking into consideration glycogen loss, sweating, and urination. This is on top of fat loss. He or she is assuming that nearly every gram lost is because of the body creating metabolic water. Although that is somewhat correct, and that one kilogram of fat would be 9,000 calories, it doesn't mean you're burning 9,000 calories a day. In the first two days, you will lose mainly water weight, even though some fat starts to get burned as well. And you level out for the next few days at approximately one kilogram of weight loss. A lot of this becomes fat loss, but it's also a small amount of water as well. The body goes into protein conservation during dry fasting, which is great. So we don't have to worry too much about losing strength and calculate too much muscle loss. So why is fasting the best way to lose weight? Everyone is always looking for a shortcut for whatever ails them in life. Weight loss is no different. Most people who suffer excessive weight are non-disciplined in the first place. Because with discipline, you will usually be able to maintain a healthy weight. The problem here is that the non-disciplined person looks for a shortcut and gets lulled into the world of weight loss scams. I'll sell you this pill for $100 and you won't have to change a thing. Or subscribe to my diet meals and your pounds will fly. Buy my supplements, necklaces, crystals and watches so that you can lose weight while you sleep. The world of weight loss scams has been ongoing for a long time. The common phrase used by these MLMs and weight loss gurus is, there's a sucker born every minute. Nothing, and I repeat, nothing will beat good hard discipline, a good diet, and fasting. In fact, I kind of consider fasting cheating. It's that good. Fasting helps you cut corners, and it helps in the following areas. In building better eating habits, so it's just so much easier to eat healthier when you exit a fast and every single vegetable sings to you. Eat me! It's the fastest weight loss you can achieve and actually keep some of it off. Water fasting and other diets are notorious for gaining it back. Three, it's not that complicated. You literally are asked to do nothing. No food, no water. It saves you money while not giving it to some greedy diet and supplement companies. Especially if you incorporate fasting into your life, you'll actually be able to notice a big budgeting difference. Oh, and it heals you at the same time. Who wouldn't want free maintenance on their body? Overall, I firmly believe that fasting is the most effective way to lose weight quickly. Other fad diets put your body into starvation mode, while fasting is the only thing that puts your body into a sort of hibernation state that preserves muscle and activates regulating mechanisms that will make it as safe as possible for you. So starvation mode is scary. Fasting mode is not. There's this myth going around that fasting is not effective for losing weight. The myth says that most of it is only water weight and it will all come right back after you start eating again. This is partially true. There's no doubt that when you abstain from food, specifically carbohydrates, your body starts to dump electrolytes and glycogen, which both help you hold on to water. And with that comes the crazy weight loss associated with the dumping of water. When you start to consume carbohydrates along with sodium and other minerals, your weight will bounce back. However, your fat content should not bounce back, depending on how much fat you lost. If you maintain a healthy diet, 
it will make things much easier. The refeed is crucial for this to work correctly. Here's the biggest problem. Your metabolism slows down during fasting, as it does on any calorie-restricting diet. That's why there are specific steps to refeeding. For fasting, it's much easier to see the stark differences. Your digestive system shuts down, so gorging yourself is not an option unless you want to land in the hospital. This makes it already better than other diets, where you can easily overeat in between sessions or after completing it. You're basically forced to eat smaller portions. If you exit the refeed carefully and slowly with small meals that gradually get bigger, you will speed up your metabolism again. But if you continue to eat healthy, well-portioned meals, you will stay leaner. Then add working out and more fasts in the future and you will be well on your way to a full body recomposition and healthier life. One more thing to mention with calorie restriction dieting versus fasting to lose weight. When heavily calorie restricting, your body never enters a form of ketosis. Ketosis is one of the main mechanisms that make losing weight safer. It forces the body to scavenge misfolded proteins and damaged cells. So it also is doing a sort of cleaning of the body. This cleaning provides necessary nutrients wherever they are needed. However, doing calorie restriction doesn't always induce ketosis, so you are losing weight very slowly. The scary part is that you are not getting enough nutrients while also increasing cellular damage. Stages of dry fasting with weight loss amount. So you can expect to lose approximately one kilogram of weight per day of dry fasting. In the first two days, some people lose up to two kilograms of weight because it is accompanied by electrolyte and water weight loss. After the first two days, it should start to slow down to approximately one kilogram of weight loss. This depends on the person, their weight, their metabolism, level of activity, etc. Be aware that the leaner someone is, the slower you can expect them to lose weight, as the body is denser, with less liquid in between fat and muscle tissue. Another thing to note uh, during your dry fast is that you are, that if you are very toxic and unhealthy, you may run into blocks that may become dangerous. This usually occurs between the fourth and eighth day, but it may arrive earlier as well. If you stop losing weight and you become extremely weak uh, to the point that moving is a big chore, you may have just arrived at one of these toxic blocks where the body is releasing too many toxins and you just cannot keep up. This is also why it's so important to prepare for the fast in advance by following proper preparation practices. Say that three times quickly. Proper preparation practices such as enemas and liquid diets. So this is a step a lot of beginners skip. I highly advise you to consider it. It makes things much easier. So if a toxic block occurs, you will need to break the fast with water. After a few hours, move on to something like diluted organic fruit juices to bring your body back up with carbohydrates and normal functioning. This is necessary to let the body deal with the toxin buildup without building up even more toxins. So basically, your body, when it's losing weight quickly, eats away at your fat cells. A lot of toxins, heavy metals, bacteria, viruses, funguses, biofilms, and more are scattered throughout your cells. But a lot of them, if not most of them, reside in your fat cells and mucus. Think of the fat cells as holding blocks in a prison. Your body tries to isolate a lot of toxins in fat cells whenever it's possible. So when undergoing drastic fat loss, think of it like a prison break, complete chaos. That's one of the reasons newer fasters need to build up to longer fasts because these toxins accumulate in the blood and they really bring you down. If you're running into these, you will need to refeed for the necessary amount of time. This means 
two times the amount of time you dry fasted. If you did five days, then you should refeed for 10 days. Then you can go back for another attempt. These two t- two x rules are not followed very strictly by a lot of people. It's important to be honest, and personally, I've shortened the refeed many times. I think you should strive for the full duration if you're planning it safe, but as long as you're trying to maintain smaller meals and eat healthy, you are technically still refeeding. However, remember, fasting is destruction, refeeding is construction. So most healing happens during the refeed. You don't want to overburden the digestive system with too much too fast, and you want to make sure you're feeding it good food. So let's do a summary of the five days, like a little walkthrough of them. We have day one of dry fasting. Stop eating and drinking. No food or water. This first stage begins your journey of removing food and water from your environment. During this dry fasting stage, seeing food, speaking about food, or smelling food causes anger and irritation. This feeling can persist for the first one to three days, depending on the person and how much they've fasted in the past. After this period, your hunger disappears. Some experienced fasters get almost no more feelings of hunger, even in the beginning. They've mastered the ghrelin hormone response. So depending on if you are doing a soft or hard dry fast, you may also abstain from all contact with water. This would include no showers, no teeth brushing, and no bathing in water. Weight loss is expected to continue to be around 1.5 kilograms per day, which is about 3.4 pounds. Weight loss is mostly water weight, as your body uses up its stored water, drops electrolytes, and glycogen while no external water is being consumed, so your body's not replenishing it. The weight loss also depends on your level of pre-fast hydration. The more you've hydrated, the more water your body's holding, the larger the drop will be over the next two days. It's just common sense. Also, urine levels are highest on the first day, obviously, and they are also dependent on your level of hydration. Then we move on to day two of a dry fast. Uh, This one is basically where your ketosis starts ramping up. So since your body is now without food and water for over 24 hours, you are now entering into deeper ketosis. As your body quickly eats up glycogen and starts to run low on stored water, autophagy starts to increase rapidly. Weight loss is expected to be around one and one and a half kilograms per day, so around two to three pounds. Can be more depending on your water situation. The body is still dropping some stored water at this point, but it's starting to transition to endogenous water production, so the metabolic water. This water comes mainly from your fat cells and starts to build up ketones in your blood. The body starts to become more acidic. So day two of a dry fast is recognized by possible headaches, nausea, and urges to eat and drink. This is uh, due to multiple factors. Blood sugar levels drop drastically. The body starts to burn fat as fuel instead of carbohydrates. And possible detoxification symptoms start occurring as autophagy increases. As the day progresses, you get less and less hungry. Thoughts of drinking water may start to occur. Again, this is dependent on experience. And urine production slows down quite aggressively and starts to turn a deeper orange as internal water runs out and the body starts to feed on the fat cells, which are filled with vitamins. Urine may be cloudy due to alkalinity, yeast infections, or other factors. So we're moving on to day three. This day is basically called the acidotic crisis. Even though these, uh, the acidotic crisis usually appears on day three, it could appear a little faster for you if you have experience and you've done multiple fasts. Or it could appear further on if you are very new to fasting or very unhealthy and overweight. And so the third day is basically a milestone. It doesn't matter if you get the acidotic crisis or not. 
you definitely level up once you're able to surpass 72 hours of dry fasting. So what happens on day three? On average, weight loss slows down a little bit because glycogen is now gone. So you're not losing water weight as much. And you're definitely starting to burn more fat than previously. The body switches to fat for water and nutrition. Headaches and problems from the first two days tend to disappear. Mind clarity increases sky high. Your brain feels oiled and is running in full gear. This is due to the ketones fueling your brain. Sleep starts to get affected. For a lot of people. Feelings of thirst increase while hunger tends to disappear. For weight loss, you are now glycogen depleted and your body has adapted to the fast. This is why so many people feel fantastic on day three or near the end of day three. Getting through those first two days is so tough, but this is where the fat starts to fly. How long you can maintain here is really up to you. Expect to lose about one kilogram of weight per day, which is about 2.2 pounds. The next few days will all be very similar. If you're fatter, you may lose more weight than if you are already fit. Day four, I call this day the, when the body fires up. So day four is a fun day. This is when you start to feel the dry fasting heat. It's great during the colder months when normally you'd want to bundle up, but instead you feel refreshed by the cool weather. Your sleep may be affected and it may take considerable effort to fall asleep. Some attribute this to higher levels of cortisol from the fight or flight response circulating in the blood. Others believe that as your body is no longer digesting and going through so many different processes, inflammation is lower, so now it's cruising at max ketones and endogenous water, so your body no longer requires as much sleep. Weight loss is expected to continue to be around 1 kilogram per day, so 2.2 pounds. Urine levels remain a similar color and have a similar amount to your day 3 urine levels, which means that most likely your metabolic water reaches a certain level of being created, hence why your urine stays at a similar level throughout the fast. Now day 5 of the dry fast. I call it the aches and pains day. The fifth day of a dry fast is known as the aches and pains day. Typically around this day, you start to feel pain in certain body areas and organs. Of course, this can happen at different days for different people, but this is the average. Many experienced fasters speculate that the aches and pains identify the areas that require healing. These areas are undergoing targeted autophagy and possibly a bunch of other mechanisms too. Heat increases a little bit more than on the fourth day and blood pressure may fluctuate depending on the person. Weight loss on day five is also expected to be around one kilogram per day, which is 2.2 pounds. So the next part here is the following days. You have to be aware that weight loss will slow down as you get into a longer and longer dry fast. These dry fasts are undertaken with the main goal of healing chronic illnesses. If you are looking for a fast and effective weight loss though, you will probably want to consider to end it around day five, if not earlier. Then you will need to refeed correctly and then undertake additional fasts as long as you still have weight to lose. It's really up to you on how long you want to fast and how quickly you want to lose weight. Another simple strategy is also to do a one or two day dry fast and transition that into a few day water fasts. You can do this many times and it's a much safer approach. So it's definitely something to consider. What about muscle preservation? I would love to provide some studies showing that muscle retention is strengthened during a dry fast, but unfortunately there are none or they're very hard to find. This is a big disadvantage of practicing dry fasting. It doesn't provide the scientific proof that a lot of people need. It's very difficult to convince someone who is very risk averse to try something that has so little research behind it. 
So suffice to say, the main literature you'd need to read most likely will be in Russian. Or you'd have to take Sergei Filanov or August Dunning's word for it. The fact of the matter remains, for anyone who has dry fasted for significant periods of time, we are aware that fat loss and water loss is epic, while muscles seem to stick around. I test this concept out every time I dry fast, specifically when I work out. It's been the same a year ago, and it's the same now. I am usually able to lift the exact same weights for almost the exact same repetitions, number of repetitions, while dry fasting, and even during the refeed. I obviously try not to push too hard. I do enjoy letting my body heal, but whenever I've tried to test my limits, I was surprised that I had similar levels of strength. Let me give you an example. Just recently, I lost 18 pounds of weight on a 5-day dry fast. The last hour of the fast, so hour 119, I went into my home gym and did shoulder presses and a few other exercises at the exact same weight I did them before the fast. And I did more pull-ups than I could do right before the fast. Mind you, I know I was 18 pounds lighter, but... Hopefully this experience makes you realize that even if there is minimal muscle loss, the fact that I could do this and I could do more is mind-blowing. I firmly believe that once the gym community gets a grasp on the effectiveness of dry fasting for muscle preservation, we'll have a new health craze bonanza spring up. Although breaking through the three days without water will kill you, mental block, Uh, it'll probably still keep 99% of people from trying it. Dry fasting as a way to skip the grueling months of cutting that people do, that so many weightlifters have to go through, is amazing. Then you can basically bulk up on healthy foods and rinse and repeat. So how to best prepare for dry fasting when doing it for weight loss and or healing? I honestly haven't talked about this experience in previous episodes too much, but I will start bringing this up more often. Enemas are a topic that scares a lot of new people coming into fasting. I've been there, so I know. Avoiding even thinking about doing an enema is how most people approach it, to be honest. However, if you're going to be doing extended fasts that are 5 days and up, you should really have a second look at them. Without an enema, You will have leftover stool and blockages in your digestive system when you start the fast. These blockages will ferment and release gases and toxins that will make your fast harder. You will feel more nauseated, bloated, have more headaches, and more. They will most likely be the reason you end the fast earlier than if you had cleaned yourself out. Luckily, There are a few different levels of approaches that you can take in regards to cleansing your colon. The easiest way is to prepare for the fast by going on an all-liquid diet. An organic juice fast, for example. Use a juicer so that there's a minimal pulp. Let's get that pulp out of there. This will work wonders and even start some weight loss and healing before you jump into the dry fast. Another thing to remember is if you're skipping the liquid preparation diet, make sure you try not to eat meat, heavy cheese, heavily processed oily foods, and sweets and sugar a few days before you you start. These foods sit in your digestive system for a long period of time. Even though carnivores claim that meat is the best food for you, it doesn't change the fact that it is tough on your digestive system. Don't get me wrong, I'm well aware of the anti-inflammatory effects of a carnivore diet and uh, that there are a lot of good arguments for it, but it does not change the fact that meat can stay in your digestive system for up to 72 hours. If you have to eat meat, consider blending it into a pate. The second, more hardcore step is to do water enemas to clean out your colon or any other type of um, enema that you like. You will want to do one the night before your fast and the morning of your fast. 
to make sure that you are really clean in there. Look up how to perform them. They are actually much simpler than you think, and not even that gross. I'll do a small graphic description since a lot of people are clueless when it comes to enemas. You'll have a sort of IV faucet of water, an IV bag of water, set up on your shower curtain rod or on the wall. You'll insert the drip you know where while laying down in your tub with your butt up or sideways. You can place pillows inside your tub or you can even do all of this lying down sideways on the floor, maybe over a towel. After emptying the IV bag of water, You'll wait a few minutes and then go to the toilet. Bam! Now you're done and can prepare for an easier, healthier fast. Side note, there's a theory that during an extended fast, the body scavenges for anything it can help to anything it can to help utilize proteins and nutrients. And it will try to scavenge inside your colon walls as well. This would be another big reason as to why you'd want to do an enema. One of the final preps that are very important for anyone doing any sort of fasting, and it can easily be the difference between a successful fast and one that had to be cut short, would be to avoid sugar and caffeine a few days before the fast. So try and induce the caffeine withdrawal headaches early on so you don't have to worry about them during the fast. I found that people who are coffee obsessed should want to transition to green tea a week or two before the fast and start trying to downregulate it. The beautiful thing about all of this is that once your fast and refeed is done, your caffeine sensitivity will be reset. So you'll be transported back to your high school days when you tried a coffee for the first time or wherever wherever else your first coffee experience was. So let's finish up uh, by going over the advantages of dry fasting over other weight loss methods. One, water uh, faster weight loss because the body is creating excess energy by trying to oxidize fat cells to create metabolic water. This water is live water and perfectly clean as opposed to potential toxins and microplastics in external water during a water fast. Number two, fat cells are ripped apart more efficiently. So since the body is actively trying to get metabolic water, this makes it easier to keep the weight off after dry fasting compared to water fasting, as long as the refeed is done correctly. Number three, dry fasting is easier to undergo because there's no constant feeling of hunger. You literally do not go through nearly as much hunger pangs as with water fasting. Eventually, you will crave water, but it's at a later stage. Number four, the skin does not become as saggy or flabby after the weight is lost. Losing a lot of weight while water fasting leaves you with loose skin. While dry fasting is actively rebuilding your epidermal layer, so your skin layer, as you lose weight. You can still get loose skin with dry fasting, but it is drastically less than with water fasting. During dry fasting, weight loss is accompanied by an improvement. Oh, this is number five, by the way. During dry fasting, weight loss is accompanied by an improvement of the body and overall well-being. So dry fasting is the ultimate anti-inflammatory since inflammation requires water. Anyone with any mucus or sinus issues will notice on day three and up that nearly all sinus problems start to disappear. Number six. You can always turn a dry fast into a water fast and still reap a lot of the early benefits, making it very flexible. And number seven, it's the simplest method of losing weight. Do nothing, eat nothing. Obviously, there's a caveat to preparation if you're going to go on a really long fast. And my personal experience with dry fasting and weight loss. So before dry fasting, I had usually maintained my weight around 195 pounds throughout my life. It's always been a mix of muscle and fat. I'd have always considered myself skinny fat. I ate healthy, but I would snack here and there. Even though I did long water fasts, I would still quickly come back to my 195 pound threshold. 
Since starting dry fasting, I have been hovering around 180 to 185 pounds now as my new normal, no matter if I eat a lot or not. I eat healthier and I crave healthier foods now. There was a new level that basically unlocked in my mind. I believe there is a spiritual aspect, but all in all, I had rewired my brain and I believe I had burned away a lot of fat cells. Not to mention I feel healthier than I had in over 10 years. My first dry fasts that were around 72 hours to about 120 hours were not done with correct refeeding and I still was in a better place than when I started. I do believe that the mistakes you make in the beginning are necessary and you need to remember that. So it's not about doing it perfectly from the start, it's about starting. Beware of analysis paralysis. And this is actually a good segue into my dry fasting thought of the day. So I was reading about John Locke, a philosopher, and a quote of his really resonated with me in the context of dry fasting and how it's viewed as crazy, dangerous, stupid. Locke said, new ideas are always suspected and usually opposed without any other reason than because they are not already common. Remember this. People who change the course of history are simply people like you and I who believe in themselves and their idea, push forward and break through barriers. It's much easier to get behind an idea that has already been expressed and put forward. But remember this when people try to put you down for trying new things like dry fasting. Raise your head up and push onwards. So to summarize everything, dry fasting will make you lose weight the quickest. It's important to remember that the first two days are mostly water weight, but as you continue the fast, you start to lose almost one kilogram per day, and a lot of it is fat. If you don't refeed correctly after a longer fast, you will gain a lot of water weight back because of sodium retention. Your metabolism will be slower as well, so make sure you very gradually up your food intake to match the metabolism that is waking up. Remember not to eat a lot of salty food in the beginning. Dry fasting is basically a cheat code to losing weight while also making you healthier. Just make sure to do it correctly. Well, we're at the end of the episode. As always, references are in the show notes. If I've convinced you to try a day or two of dry fasting, maybe I've saved you some money or on groceries or some bottled water. If you would like to support this podcast and my work at exploring dry fasting topics, I have a link in the show notes where you can donate and buy me a coffee. You'll also get access to a private server for members where we can help you out. If you're not able to, leaving a five star and a like or a comment on the YouTube goes a long way. If you have questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to answer them and compile maybe the best ones into a future video. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for listening. Make sure you join our Discord or Telegram and thank you and good luck on your dry fasting journey.